So you seem to have connected with with Mike Zek really kind of early on in your in your artistic career as far as comics goes. So how instrumental was he in you getting your big break into the business to really cement yourself as as kind of a power player? Um, I would say he was very instrumental because number one, he was very patient with me. Um, throughout this time, uh, I was 15 years old, and so. I had enough, I guess, skill or talent that Mike could see um, to work with me. And, uh, you know, so he was very helpful in encouraging me to um, to continue, you know, and to get better. And he would continue to send me pencils to, you know, ink on. So I had, you know, professional quality pencils uh, to practice my inking on. Um, at 17, I went to another Orlando convention and Bob McLeod was there. And uh, I met Bob, but I also met Bill Black. And I started working with Bill, uh, doing more fanzine stuff uh, with his Paragon publications, which is also, you know, he spun off into uh, AC Comics, AmeriComics. And, uh, you know, so Bill offered me work. So that was something that I could do and actually know it was going to get printed, which was, that was very cool. And then um, at that same time, uh, I kind of had a conversation with Bob and, you know, I... I basically asked Bob if he ever needed help just filling in blacks or something on a job, you know, give me a call and I would gladly drive over. I was in Daytona. He was in Tampa. So it's like I was East coast. He was West mm -hmm. coast. And, um, you know, I, there, there were a few times when Bob called me and said, Hey, could you come over for a weekend? I need somebody to fill in blacks and erase pages and just do grunt work like that. And I said, yeah, sure. Now, the good thing about that is when, when you're, you know, when you're doing that, you get to see what it, you know, what a professional page really looks like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Bob would, you know, when I wasn't busy, you know, doing the assistant work that he wanted me to do, I could go in and, you know, watch over Bob's shoulder and kind of ask him questions and stuff. I remember uh, you know, watching Bob, Bob got a, uh, a ghostwriter cover that was penciled by Bob Budiansky and he had to really, I mean, literally turn this cover around, um, in one day. So he got the pencils sometime, I think when FedEx was first starting 10, 10 30, you know, it would come to your house. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think he got it inked. I filled in the blacks and it was a, a nighttime sky and uh you know bob said do you want to do the stars and i said well yeah i, I guess i could do that you know it just white out in the brush and he goes okay but before you do it he goes go outside and look in the sky and i was like what for he goes look at the stars he goes i don't want a galaxy you know i want stars and so that was kind of a good lesson because, you know, uh, you go out and look at the, the nighttime sky. It's not like, say, a Jim Starlin uh, cosmic odyssey <laughs> uh, galaxy full of, you know, splattered stars everywhere. You know, they're, they're, while there are a lot, there's less than what you think. So um, that was a very interesting way for Bob to teach me you know, uh, how to look at something and interpret it into comic art. Now I know comic art, you know, can be, uh, extreme and stuff, but he didn't want the stars to like be overpowering in this, uh, nighttime sky. He wanted it to just, you know, look and, and feel right. So as simple as that sounds, it was a uh, very, you know, to me, I it, look, I still remember it to this day. So that tells you what kind of impact that had on me. 
that kind of leads into my next question is uh, when you were kind of first starting out in your inking career, did you actually have like an inking mentor or specific inker or anything that kind of took you under the wing? Or is that something you kind of developed on your own uh, while working with the, the regular artists that you were inking for? Uh, how did that, how did you, how did you refine and hone your craft that way? Um, I had a few. Uh, Bob, of course, was very influential. Um, him still being over in Tampa was, you know, great because I, I could stay in contact with him easy. My exec, again, before I, you know, really got into the business, uh, he was constantly working with me. I was sending him stuff and he would, you know, he'd call me on the phone and we'd go over the stuff. And uh, sometimes if he had, if he had a chance, he would actually, you know, do tracing paper stuff and, and give me tips. And, uh, once I broke into the business, then, you know, Joe Rubenstein was kind of well known for taking uh, a lot of newer inkers who broke into the business and kind of, you know, giving him what he could knowledge wise, you know, like you get a job and Joe would want to show you how he would ink it, which uh -huh. looking back, I don't know if that's quite yeah you know, i mean it's kind of uh, you know it's 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 a bit uh uh good on one hand but another way when somebody's inking on your pages you know it's like hey wait a minute that's my job it's like i i'm good if you explain it to me but uh you know i i learned a lot of valuable stuff from joe and uh but you know uh everybody i mean it's it 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 was a it wasn't like you were competing with with anybody. Mm -hmm. It was like people were trying to genuine genuinely help you um, improve and get better. And uh, you know, it was one of those things where um, you know you took what you could from from everybody. You know that that was willing to sit down and look at your work and go over it with you and give you their opinion on what was good what could use work and uh, good times, you know, I mean, it was, it was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm sure there's a few people I'm, I'm probably missing out, but uh, you know, those are, those are the people that I really remember, you know, helping. So here's to me kind of a, a difficult one to formulate in at least words that you probably understand. But uh, so what does it take to actually ink a comic book? I mean, I'm, thinking like angles of lighting and all that and shading how do you just visualize a page you know on top of the pencils ahead of time or how, how do you go about like just inking a comic book i mean does it i know each 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 panel is its own separate entity but i mean is there like an overlying theme to your page or, or how, how do you go about your process normally well uh for me um and i i i guess i got this habit uh through bob uh, was whenever I would get a job to ink, I would make photocopies of it so that if something happened to those pencils, um, you know, whether I made a mistake and needed to refer back to them or if I'm just, you know, keeping the pencils as I'm inking and making sure that I'm retaining uh, the artist's intent, uh, that was number one is I would always make photocopies of the pencils before I started inking. Second thing I would do is I, if I could get a hold of the penciler, if we were going to be working together on a project, I would try to reach out to them and introduce myself and ask them, you know, is there anything specifically you're, you know, you're looking at inkwise on this, you know, are you, uh, it, Sometimes the pencils, you know, where you're, where you're, where you're, well, they should be your, your best guide, but the pencilers back then left more up to the inker than what the, say, modern pencilers do today. Uh, mm -hmm. Pencils that I've seen today are, you know, if you can trace a line, you, I guess you can ink, you know. Uh, it pains me to say that, but um, it's kind of true because the pencils are just so tight. Uh, you know, they'll put down four lines and they're definitive etched into paper four lines. 
it's not just a, you know, kind of like a scribble and it's up to you to delineate or to figure out what, what, are, what's he, what's this person trying to show me with these four lines. So, um, for me, I, I, I would look at a page and I would try to analyze it and look at the important stuff on it and realize that it was my job to, you know, make that the focus of, of that page. And there's also, you know, something in every panel that's the focus. So whether it was with uh, a, a line weight or a texture or zip a tone back when we had it or something, something to separate the planes. Mm -hmm. Um, of focus that was uh, you know to me it's it's like uh, the penciler would would take a photo and it's up to me to develop it and it's up to me to uh, you know how long do I expose this do I overexpose it do I underexpose it where's the focal point where's the clarity um, you know how much detail uh, do I render? And this is, a, you know, you have to take into consideration again, this is with pencils that uh, a penciler allows the anchor to have a voice in the final product. Not, like I said, a lot of current pencilers whose work I've seen that is beautiful work, but it's just literally all there. You know, I mean, it, like I said, it's beautiful, but it's all there. They're They're basically penciling i mean they're basically inking with a pencil mm -hmm. gotcha now <clears throat> you've done uh pe both penciling and inking throughout your career mm -hmm. which process do you find faster or maybe easier be another question but neither neither <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no it's it's uh you know comic books are tough you know they're not easy um and I think it's probably one of the hardest jobs artistically to do is to uh, work in comic books because you you you're called on to do a lot of different things, um, and you you know back in the day before the internet, you know you would have to do your research. You would go out and buy books. You know if you had a story that took place in, you know, some other land, some other time. Well, you relied on books. Now you can just dial it up. You can go to good old Google and uh, put in your search term and you can come up with page after page after page of every shot you could ever imagine. Now, boy, what, what a wonderful thing that must yeah. be to have. You know? <laughs> I mean, we didn't have that. So we used to have huge libraries of books and 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 scrap, you know, where you would take and and you would never know. So you would, in magazines, you know, if you subscribe to magazines, you would just tear something out, and you know, if it was cars, you would have a, a, a like a Manila folder or uh, something like that, and they called them morgue files, and uh, you would just like, you know. Any picture of a car, you would tear it out because you never knew when you might need that car reference. Um, you know, so stuff like that was very valuable. Now, like I said, uh, dial it up on the internet, you're going to find more than enough reference. It's it's nice for the artist, I'd say, a little bit easier than having to lug all that stuff around and, and keep oh, the yeah. files and dig up things. You know, you can literally... Uh, Get an iPad Pro, and you can you can do everything. You, you know, you can pencil on it, you can ink on it, you can color on it, you can do your research on it, you can do anything. You know, so you, I mean, that's all you really need. You know, you don't need like a, you know a bottle of ink. <laughs> you know? It's electronic ink yeah. now. The the squid or virtual. Exactly, yeah. and then, and it never runs out. You know, I mean. It might run out if your if your device goes dead, but <laughs> you know, I mean, you're definitely, uh, you know, like I said, I've 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 said in other interviews, I have a love hate relationship with technology. Uh, I love certain things it can do, but I also hate other things that it can do. So, um, I like the idea that. 
whatever I put on a page, you know, with my brush and ink, mm -hmm. that if it's scanned in, it's going to print. I never, you know, when I was in the 80s and stuff, it was a guessing game. You know, you would you would kind of find where 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 it was that you could like you know how fine a line you could go, mm -hmm. and it was by trial and error. You know, so it, it wasn't you know now you can put down a, a line that you know maybe is a very uh, maybe not even a line you intentionally wanted to put down, but just a uh, you know you drop the pen and it does like a little wispy line, and scanner is going to pick it up. Yeah, there's kind of a kind of a love hate relationship, at least for me too, with the technology. I mean, it's it's very nice to like say have an e-reader, so I can take out my mm -hmm. my Nook or my tablet or whever, and I can see basically everything that's ever been printed in this entire history of the world, right? Right. But at the same time, I don't like using them. I like to read a book, you know, in my hand. Yeah. So it's like it's so, so weird that yin and yang. You got to balance them both, right? And either adapt to yeah. the times or just yeah. stay with what you like. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, you know, I for me, I you know, I I. I like to adapt. I like technology. That's why I said I, I, I embrace it and it's my son's future. It's his life now. Uh, but I had to adapt to it. And I know some people that push back on it and don't want to even, you know, uh, embrace any part of it. Those are very rare, but, um, they are out there, you know,